Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so thankful and glad to God for being God all by himself. He is the maker and creator and in control of all. And we just thank God for him being who he is. And we praise him for it this morning. With all the stuff that's going on, God is still God and God is still good. And we just thank him. We are so thankful and excited, um, especially this time of year. It's a year end and also the um, almost the start of a new year showing how God has blessed even though we're going through a lot of things in the midst of everything, God has still been a constant. He has still been consistent. He has still been God. <laughs> and that is a wonderful thing. His grace and his mercy and his love faileth not. And we just thank God for that. We just thank God for all of you tuning in this morning um, or this afternoon whenever you... <laughs> Um, getting the opportunity to look at this and we just thank God for it. We do solicit your prayers for the, for the poor, the sick, um, the shut-in, all of those who are in bereavement, the caretakers, the essential workers, all of those who are taking care of other folks. We just thank God for them and we pray um, their strength and encouragement in the Lord. Amen. With so many things going on. Um, we do ask for comfort for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Me and, um, me and one of my deacons were talking yesterday about thinking back and reflecting on family who's gone on, who's not here, who, you know, you, you've shared um, these, this, this time of the year with over the decades and now they're, they're gone. But you have to move on. You don't. You may not, you may get through it, but you, you don't get over it. Amen. And this is where, this is where we left it. But God is still good. God is still strengthening and we thank God for that. And there is a word from the Lord this morning and we want to get into that. But before we get into the word, we um, ask that you come and join us in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Looking beyond all of our faults and seeing our needs. Lord, we, we need you. We need you without a shadow of a doubt. We need you in everything that we do. We need you no matter how great, no matter how small it is. We need you. And you've told us in all our ways, in all our ways, whether big or small, in all our ways, we should acknowledge you and you shall direct our path. And we will follow that this morning. Father, we come praying for the sick. We come praying for those who are shut in. We come praying for the encouragement of those who are taking care of those who can't take care of themselves. We're praying for those who are in mourning um, and bereavement this morning over lost loved ones or ones who have passed on as they reflect back and you, you will strengthen them through your Holy Spirit. We thank you this day. Father, we ask that you bless your word. Bless your word. Bless the hearers and doers of your word. And we ask that you continue to strengthen this ministry and bless this ministry as we go on to do your will and not our will. These and other blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our word for today is found in the New Testament in um, one of Paul's pastoral uh, well, one of Paul's epistles to the churches, not one of his pastoral epistles, but one of his epistles to the churches, the church at Ephesus. We want to look at Ephesians 6, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we want to look at one verse, that 17th verse. And we know this is chapter and it says, you know, put on the whole armor of God. Well, we're taking one part of that armor and we want to look at it briefly. And that 17th verse says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. And we would like to use as a thought today, the word of God, the word of God. And in, in, in teaching about the word of God and in discussing about the word of God, we've, we've talked and we've, you know, we've said how Jesus is the word of God. But we also do know that there is a literal or a written word as well. We know that there is a holy writ. We know that there is a script. We know that the scrolls are there of inspired men um, through the Holy Ghost writing the words of God. 
We look at, we look, for example, Jesus, who is the word made flesh. Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan um, by John the Baptist. And then he was led in the wilderness by the Holy Ghost to be tempted of Satan. Amen. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And after that fast, he was hungry. And then Satan came to him and tempted him three times. The, the first one, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread and eat. And then Jesus used the word of God, amen, with, to him, on him all three times. See, see, the devil wanted him to succumb to his tricks, but Jesus did not. Every time Satan would present something to Jesus, he would he would use the word of God to overcome that temptation. He would he would always begin his responses to Satan with the clause. It is written, which means that the word in which he is speaking are words that had been documented down through history. Amen. That meant that someone had been inspired to write these words spoken by the mouth of God himself to be referenced by mankind down through the ages. It was written for a record to know that this is how God felt. This is what God meant. This is what God is instructing us to do. The written word will never become out of date. It will never become absolute, obsolete, and it will never become useless to humanity. To humanity. This is the importance of the word of God. So when we look at the word of God, we look at the, we know the importance of the word of God. Let's look at its purpose. What is the purpose of, what is the purpose of the word of God? And I'm glad you asked me. I'm glad you asked that. The word of God has many purposes. It has many functions. It can, it can fit many situations. Second Timothy, um, the third chapter, 16 and 17 verses says the word of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. See, you, it, it, there, there are four things mentioned here. Paul mentioned there um, uh, to Timothy. The word of God is, first of all, it is profitable for doctrine, which means it's good to learn. It's good to know the mind of God. It's good to know what God is thinking. It's good to know that God um, is writing and uh, giving us something to go by, something to follow, something to stand on. This is doctrine, something in which we live by, something in which we base our faith on. This is doctrine. So the first thing, the first thing is profitable for doctrine. The second thing for reproof, which means that it instructs us. It gives us the right way to go. It shows us the right way to go. Um, um, it, it clarifies a lot of things. We may have questions. Like, I wonder what this is God. No, God lays it out. Thou shall not or thou shalt. You shall do these things. So it's good for reproof. Also, it's good for correction. Whenever we are wrong, you can you can look up our wrongs <laughs> at the word of God. God has already spoken how to get that right. You do something wrong. John the Baptist was out in the wilderness preaching. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You have to repent. That is for correction. We, The word of God, as it is written, as Jesus says, it is for correction. It straightens us out. And then for instruction in righteousness, it tells us how to live right. The word of God tells us how to live right. And Paul finished that statement to Timothy saying that the man of God may be complete, which means that if you got this word down, if you've studied to show yourself approved unto God, if you've studied this word, you are complete. You will not be ashamed rightly dividing the word, dividing the word of truth. And then it says thoroughly equipped for every good work. The word of God has a, has a solution and a resolution for every situation. And this is what Paul says. All of these are, are, are purposes, purposes of the word of God. And there, there are many other passages in the Bible that could be cited to give evidence that the word of God has many functions. This is, these are only a few. And now when we're looking at a verse today, Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus and it gives us another purpose. He says that the word of God is a weapon. Notice what Paul says. He metaphorically symbolizes the word of God as a sword. He calls it the sword of the spirit. He symbolizes it as a 
sword. And, and it's not to be used against flesh and blood. It's not to kill people. But Paul tells what the word of God or that sword of, that sword of the spirit, what it's used to fight against. He said that it's used to fight against principalities. Yeah, yeah. His rules of fight against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age or this present time. It's, it's used against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is why this is why we use the word of God. We don't use the word of God to tear people up and to tear people down. But we use the word of God for these things that Paul is telling us right here. These are other purposes against principalities, against powers, these wicked powers, these evil powers. And they are of a spiritual nature against the rulers of darkness, Satan and his imps against the spiritual host or, 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 or these, these demonic forces in high places. And this is including in public office and, 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 and things in the atmosphere. We use the word of God to speak these things. And of all the armor, Paul lists in chapter six, such as the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. And, and, and that's just two of them. The sword of the spirit is the only offensive weapon. Everything else is used. All other parts of the armor is used to cover and protect the body. But the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is the only offensive weapon that Paul gives. And, and the sword is used to destroy and to wound the enemy. This is the only thing that Paul gives us to fight back. This is the only this is the only weapon or the piece of the armor that we have that Paul tells us that we have to fight back. And it is the word of God. We're covered. We're covered by God. But the sword is what we use to fight back. A -a Amen. We can take the licks, but we can also give the licks back. But we have to use the word of God. We can't give Satan a piece of our mind. We have to give Satan a piece of the word. That is our sword. That is our weapon that we use that God has given us to fight the enemy. Now, this sword, this sword or uh, this sword is the sword of the spirit. In other words, the word of God was given by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. It, it also it also lets us know that the word of God is the most effective weapon against our spiritual enemies. And remember the Bible Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and told them that 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 our weapons are not carnal. <laughs> Amen. As as a gun and all this it, they're not carnal. We, you, our weapons are not the uh, the 9 millimeter or the 357 Magnum or the nuclear bomb. Because we cannot fight a spiritual battle using carnal weapons. Amen. And, and I know we know that. See, you have to use the word of God against him, against the enemy. If you want to get the victory, there is no other way. You can't go to anybody else and say, I need you to help me. You can't go to this witch, this warlock, the root worker. If there is a spiritual battle that you want to fight, you got to use that holy inspired word of God, that God, that sword of the spirit that God has given us to fight the enemy. When Jesus going back, when Jesus was in the wilderness and the first thing that he tried to, Satan tried to get him to do is, is he was so hungry. Now turn, speak and turn these stones into bread. You know you're hungry, but Jesus says, no, no, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Satan tried to take him on a high pinnacle and tell him, you know, here, you know, jump down because the word says, see, Satan even tried to use the word against the word. Mm. So we got to be slick just because folk can quote scripture don't mean that they're of God. But Jesus says that man shouldn't tempt the Lord thy God. A amen. And he did a third. He took him to a mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, this stuff is mine. If you bow down, I'll give it to you. But Jesus said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only will I serve. You know, you got to be able to use the word against the enemy in order to get the victory. If you're going to do damage to the enemy, you got to know the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. And just like just like a sword in battle, the word of God must be wielded or handled properly. You got to know how to use it. 
You got to know how to use it. In order to become effective and to know how to use things, you got to practice it. The word of God or the sword of the spirit is not just for ceremonial use. You see these, these military people and they have their swords and they look all down in their dress. They look all tight in their dress blues and stuff. And that sword is just hanging to the side for ceremonial use. Amen. The word of God is not just for that. And it's not just to make one um, who bears it look good. You, your quote in scripture is not good enough. Oh, it, 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 yeah, you can impress folk because you know some word and you know some Bible. But how can but can you use it? Can you use it? It's good to have a gun, but can you use it? It's good to have a knife or a sword, but can you use it? It's good to have a bomb, but can you use it? Or do you know how to use it effectively? It's best wielded or it's best used when the spoken word is spoken out loud against the forces of darkness that attack us. You got to be able to call that enemy or call that monkey out using the word of God. Amen. You got to be able to speak that thing out. You got to be able to know it. When you know that the enemy is coming against you with all sorts of mess and all sorts of things, you got to be able to use the word of God and be able to speak out loud and say, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. When he comes in and bring one thing after another, like a Job crisis and stuff, you got to be able to speak that word and says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against you got to be able to know how to use that sword you got to be able to cut that mess up right or left it's a double-edged sword that is a weapon that God has given us when the enemy comes to attack us you got something to fight back but you got to know how to use us if they attack us if the enemy attack us with some serious some serious in, um, um, illness for example, Psalms 118 and 17, you got to know that word. You got to be able to speak to it and say, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You got to be able to do that. If the enemy attacks us with some kind of messy financial situation, you got to be able to say, as Paul wrote the church in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And then he finished up in that 19th verse and said, but my God shall supply all my needs. I know the enemy is coming in and he's trying to mess with my finances and my money is looking funny, funny and all this stuff and I got more month than I do money and all of this stuff. I got to be able to say God's got my back. God's going to take care of me but I got to be able to use that weapon. I got to be able to speak that weapon to make it become effective. The sword of the spirit is effective for use against any attack of the enemy. Anything that Satan has to come to you, he cannot resist or he cannot fight against the word of God. No matter what the problem, no matter what the situation, the word of God can handle it. But the only way, the only way you can use it or know how to use it, you got to get into that word. You got to get into the sword of the spirit. You got to know how to use the word of God if you're going to speak. Don't just quote something you heard somebody else say. You got to know it for yourself. You got to know it for yourself. The sons of Sceva, the sons of Sceva, who um, in Acts 19, who were professional exorcists, they came against a man who was possessed with a demon. The Bible says that 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 seven of them, seven Sceva had seven sons and they went there and they were going to cast this demon out of this man. But it was one of those strong demons. It was one that talked with that voice like, ah, what you doing there? <laughs> and they came there and they said, you know, in, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, you know, we, we cast you out. But the demon knew that they did not know the word of God. <laughs> Amen. The demon looked at him and said, huh. Say now Jesus we know and 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 Paul we know but 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 who are you and the bible says that that demon that demon possessed man jumped on all seven of them and whipped them because they did not know how to use that weapon that God had Jesus is the word of God the word is also written 
And that's why we must get that word in us. David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We have to get that word down on the inside and we have to be ready to use it at any time. But we cannot use it if we don't know what the word is. That's why you need to read your Bible every day. That's why you need to study your word. That's why you need to go. You need to ask God, let this word stay in me, Lord. Let this word stay in me. Let my steps be ordered by your word. Amen. It is important to know the word of God. It is important, it's important to know the purposes of the word of God. So don't just stand around anymore. Don't just, just take shots. Don't just take the shots of the enemy. Don't just let Satan punch you and you 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 grab yourself and cry. You got to take up the sword of the spirit and you got to fight back. You got to do some damage on that enemy. Jesus says, Jesus says, or God says, he told Adam or he told Eve that 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 hurt that the enemy will bruise his heel, but your seed will bruise his head. And how do we bruise the head? of the, the enemy. How do we bruise that serpent's head? We have to use the word of God. We have to use the word of God, but you have to learn how to use that weapon. You have to learn how to use that weapon. You have to know what that word can do. You have to know when to say it and when to use it. And Paul put it plainly when he wrote to Timothy and he said, son, he said, study. That's a key word. He says, study. Now, when you study, you ain't trying to impress anybody else. But he says, study to show thyself approved unto God. When you're reading the Bible, it's not to get out and tell somebody, well, I read 15 verses this morning, this chapter. It is getting so good. It is getting so good. I just love reading the word every day. But are you learning how to use that word? Are you putting it in your heart? Amen. Are you putting it in your heart? Study to show, your, show yourself approved unto God. God, I'm doing this because I want to know as much as I can about you. And I want to know how to use the weapon in which you've given me. He said a workman, Paul said a workman needed not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. There are a lot of people out there trying to speak the word of truth, but they're not rightly dividing it because they do not know how to use the sword of the spirit. They don't know how to use the word of God. But in order to know how to use it, you have to practice it every day. A person who knows karate, a, a, a third degree black belt is not someone who practices once a week. Mm -mm. A third degree black belt is someone who practices that skill every day. Until it become until he becomes a master and you don't get a black belt until you've mastered certain things. You can stay you can stay red, orange, brown, white all your life if you do not put the time in to learn the craft or to learn the skill. But the word of God is power. So my brothers and sisters, I, I, I adjure you today to join with me, to get into that word and learn that word. Learn of this weapon and learn of this power in which God has left for us. Some of y'all worried about the hocus pocus. It ain't about the hocus pocus. It's about getting into that word and learning what God has told us to do. How he's told us to live, what he's told us to stand on, how he told us to treat people. That is power that God has given us. Amen. 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 We thank you for tuning in. My brothers and sisters, I, I just hope you got something out of the lesson. I know that we talk about the word of God um, all the time, but this is just a lesson specifically focusing on what, what are some purposes and how why God's word is so important to get into it. Not going to church is all right, but getting into his word is better because there come a time you might not like this past year. You may not be at... <laughs> You may not be able <laughs> to get into, excuse me, you may not be able to get into his word. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is our prayer. We thank you so much for um, joining us this morning um, or whenever you got a chance to, to join us. We thank you for your continued support. 
of the word of God. God has been so good to all of us. And we know that it's coming up to the, the Christmas season. So we pray that you use wisdom during this time. And it's okay to reflect back over loved ones and all, but, but also give God praise for where he has brought us and the time that he has given us. Amen. And I want to give a shout out to all of you for what you have, what you've done for me, um, pertaining to a, a Christmas gift. I thank God for all of you and I love you so much for everything that you've done. And I pray that God continue to keep um, our, our family together for a long, long time. Amen. 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 We thank you for your financial support as well, Mispa, and our, our, our covenant partners. You showed up and showed out yesterday. We thank God for what you've done for the ministry. We just, we just thank God so much for that. Amen. We will be back at the um, house again the second Saturday in January. I don't have that date um, right on hand right now, but it will be the second Saturday in January. I was looking to hopefully go in um, the first part of January, but with the surges starting again, we don't know. So, you know, God gives us a sound mind, so we better be safe with that. But um, we're playing it by ear, listening out for um, the unction of the Lord to tell us, you know, it's okay and we go back in. I know what everybody else might be doing, but I'm talking about us. A amen. So we want to see what what happens this first um, part after, after Christmas and, and when things start to go back down, we'll see how things are. Amen. But bracing the second Saturday coming up, uh, bracing the second Sunday, that Saturday bracing the second Sunday in January, that's when the trustee committee will come back together again for our tithes and offerings and um, also for our covenant partners. Um, we ask that you continue to share. Amen. Share this word with friends and family, just like I asked my members to do or members of MISPA to do, share this word. Amen. And we thank God for your contributions that you've given, that God has laid on your heart to share with us. That address is, is right there at MISPA Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Faxley, Georgia 31515. That's MISPA Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Faxley, Georgia 31515. Okay, I got to get out of here. And I, I ask that you continue to pray for our sick, for our shut-in, um, for those in bereavement. Um, continue to pray for <coughs> our leadership, excuse me, our leadership of this country and the world. Um, they, they, we need prayer. Amen. I'm so glad that God is still in control. We need prayer. Amen. Um, stay safe when we go out. Omicron is there. Um, the Delta variant is still the most widely, well, most widespread variant out there. So be safe, be safe. I know a lot of folks are not masking up now and stuff, but you be safe. Go ahead and mask up, it's okay. Amen, unless you're on the outside and not in crowds and stuff like that, you just be safe and do what you're supposed to do. Amen, amen, amen. So we're gonna get on out of here. I love all of you. And I want you to have a wonderful, beautiful day. It's, it's going to be a little chilly today, but you make sure you take care of yourself. So until next time, take care of yourself and each other. I love you.